Hey, Seven Hundred Club family. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Guys, it's the end of a week. Exactly. And we have got some hashtag Friday feeling yes. for you guys. We have a powerful yep. story to share with you all. And we have our, our amazing guest, Lori Catone. Yes. We are so happy to have yes. you, Lori. Thank um, you. And talk about your book right here, Nothing mm -hmm. is Wasted, A True Story of Finding Peace in yep. Chaos. All of us can relate to that. Um, but right. first, I mean, can you just kind of briefly go into your testimony with your son, Graham, and all that amazing stuff? Just give us a brief synopsis yes. if you can. Yes, you know? absolutely. And, and it, yes, it is hard to be brief. I know. To be brief because yeah. there's so much to the story. Exactly. And that's why I ended up writing a book. Get the book. Mm -hmm. Because there's the so story. many <laughs> little stories in it. Yeah. And I wrote it because... Um, when I would talk about what was going on and what my journey was entailing with my son, so many people related. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. it, and, and they didn't relate just because they were parents or just because their son was on drugs or just because yeah. their son had an adverse uh, diagnosis. Uh -huh. But they, they related because they were all on a faith journey. Yeah. Yeah. And things happen to us all the time in our life mm -hmm. that don't go the way we planned. Yeah. They don't go the way we wanted. Mm -hmm. And especially when it's your child, you yeah. want to take care of that and you want to rescue them mm -hmm. and you want yeah. to, you know, make sure things go right. Mm -hmm. And that's just not always how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so as he began in his teenage years uh -huh. to go further down uh, bad choices, mm -hmm. uh, down those roads, <clears throat> um, I kind of went with him, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. as a mom mm -hmm. and experienced emotionally yeah. Um, those things and mm -hmm. he um, you know had suicide attempts and he had much anxiety and he uh, was in prison for a while mm -hmm. and there were so many things um, but I had to realize that I wasn't in control mm -hmm. and that I wasn't his rescuer and thank God I'm not yeah, yeah. because we have a rescuer That's that is great. so much yeah. better at it mm -hmm. than I could ever be. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's yeah, beautiful. one of the things that I absolutely love about your story is that anybody can relate to it. Exactly. Uh, we had the privilege of watching uh, your story on screen. Moving mm -hmm. Works did an, an awesome job with it. Yeah. You did. Now, in yeah, this great job. story, your whole you know story that you talk about in your book and in your mm -hmm. video, the overlying message is really that you had to learn to trust God. And I love that you say, there's a little piece in your video, which you can watch in a couple of minutes. We're going to show you. Yeah. But I love that you say that you had to trust God and not trust him for the outcome, but just right. to trust him. Can mm. you talk a little bit right. about that to our audience? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm so glad you said that because that really is the crux of the story is mm -hmm. that uh, as parents, we can't help but to try to rescue our children. Yeah. And we have in our mind, when we have that little baby and we mm -hmm. hold that baby for the first time, we have in our mind what their life's going to be like mm -hmm. and how we're going to raise them differently <laughs> than mom and dad did. And, yeah. Or, you know, this we're going to do right yeah. and this, this we're going to do different. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and they're going, they can't help but make the right decisions, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't go that way. Mm -hmm. um, but then we as parents, or at least I did, I continued to cling to the outcomes that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I wanted him to, you know, be healthy and I wanted him to have a good education and to marry that great girl and, yeah. you know, to do all those wonderful things mm -hmm. and then look back over his life and say, oh, I made all these great mm -hmm. decisions. And that's not the way it was going. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would try to come in and rescue. And, and so my plans changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. They would tweak a little bit because, oh, okay, that's not going to happen now. But we could do this, God. This mm -hmm. could be the great thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I felt like I was always telling God what I thought would be yeah. Yeah. the yeah. outcome yeah. that would be great. Yeah. And um, I eventually just needed to lay that all down yeah. and just say, God, I need to trust in you. Yeah. What do you want for him? And you know him better than I know mm -hmm. him. You know him better mm -hmm. than he knows himself. Yeah. And so you know how to reach him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it may mean, because of his some of his decisions, it may mean that road is really, really rough. Mm -hmm. And I don't want him to go down that road. Yeah. But God says, well, he needs to go down that road if you want the true outcome. Wow. And so eventually when when I started just stripping away what all those outcomes were mm -hmm. that I wanted, I realized the 
the one true outcome that I wanted was for my son to have peace and joy. Yeah. 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 And peace and joy is a person. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. He is Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's not me. Mm -hmm. And he's not this wonderful girl that he's going to marry or mm -hmm. education or yeah. a great job. It's in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And when mm -hmm. I began to pray that way and worship in that way, God changed me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Before he ever did the miracle, and he did do a miracle mm -hmm. in Graham. Mm -hmm. yeah. But before he ever did the miracle in Graham, he, yeah. he was doing a miracle in me wow. as mom. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's really what my story is about, yeah. Yeah. is whether or not Graham said yes to the miracle God was doing, mm -hmm. I was going to say yes to the miracle he was doing yeah, in me. That's yeah. so good. That's wow. Good. Now, yeah. what, like, can you give our followers just a brief <laughs> description? What was the miracle that you witnessed in your son? What was that? Um, well, he actually decided um, that in order to get rid of his anxiety, in order to be um, a happy individual, that marijuana was going to be his answer to everything, that mm -hmm. that was going to calm him down. Mm -hmm. And um, so he hitchhiked to California mm -hmm. um, and that's where he was going to just, you know, get everything he needed. Mm -hmm. And what he was doing was he was going completely away from family and friends and mm -hmm. everyone he knew. Yeah. And, um, and I just could do nothing but let him go, yeah. you know, and trust the Lord that the Lord was going with him. Yeah. And he did. He went with yeah, him. Yeah, he yeah. went before him, and he went That's after right. him, and he was all yeah, around right. him. That's mm -hmm. so good. Um, but one day, I mean, there was a couple of weeks we didn't hear from him at all. And um, and I, he, do you know that I didn't really know the true, like, what he experienced until I watched the video myself? Yeah. Wow. Because he never, like, told me everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but Graham just realized he had nothing. Mm -hmm. He got things his backpack stolen from him and he had nothing yeah. and he was he called me and he was happy 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 wow and my first thought was what cult are you in <laughs> what is going on now you know yeah, yeah. and and turns out it he experienced Jesus mm -hmm. and uh, God gave him a vision so, wow. um, when he was down on at the bottom yeah. yeah you know he looked up he said I didn't know anybody but I knew God mm -hmm. was yeah. there Jesus. Yes. Yeah. So I wasn't there. I didn't rescue him. I yeah. didn't do it. God did it. That's right. And and when he looked to God, God gave him a vision of mm -hmm. what his life would be like yeah. mm -hmm. with him and without him. Mm -hmm. And I love what he says. He said, God made the choice very easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And God always gives us a choice. Yeah, he does. It's true. And, and even everything God did, if Graham hadn't said yes mm -hmm. to God, mm -hmm. then the miracle wouldn't have been received. Yeah. Yeah. So I just thank God that he did. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a Definitely. beautiful. Well, how is beautiful Graham story. today? Yeah. How, Gra you know? Yeah. Gra <laughs> Graham is And still. all your family. I mean, you have four sons? I have four boys. Four boys. Yes. Okay. And Graham's the oldest. Yeah. And I have four gorgeous <laughs> sons. Awesome. They're uh, awesome, wonderful um, young men who mm -hmm. um, who just love life and, and love people and um, and they're they're just they're de they're just great. Yeah. yeah. Um, Graham is is still Graham. He's still quirky <laughs> and he's still funny and he's yeah. still yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. very smart. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes he's still very hard to deal with, <laughs> you know. But but he is a different person today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and you'll see in the video that that Graham was on at least eight different antipsychotic medications mm -hmm. at one time. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus came in and the Holy Spirit changed his life, he he's off all medications. Wow. He does no drugs. Yeah. Um, he loves Jesus. Amen. He Amen. is involved in his church. He is accountable to men. Wow. He's still making mistakes like we all do. We all do. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and you know he's not perfect, mm -hmm. but yeah. um, but he's happy. Amen. Yeah. And more yeah. than happy, he has joy. And that was your prayer. And peace. Yeah. Oh. He really. He's more peace than than I do a lot of times, you know, yeah, than anybody yeah. that I know because wow. he knows what it's like to have nothing yeah. and to be mm -hmm. at the bottom. And and I think he's just he just trusts the Lord. Yeah. So, so it is it is amazing. Yeah. I love it. And I love what you to go back to what you said a moment ago for those just watching. Mm -hmm. Peace and, and joy peace are and joy. not 
it's a person. It's a They're person. not things. That's it's right. a person. It's right. Jesus. Or feelings. It's it's Jesus. And I love yeah. that, right. that mm-hmm. you say that. Yes. Mm-hmm. So tell All us about him. quickly, can you tell us mm-hmm. why did you decide to write this book yeah. now? Like what dro- what was that moment like that drove you to write this book? To mm-hmm. sit down and, and write right, it. Right, mm-hmm. right, right, right. Well, uh I love to tell stories, mm-hmm. yeah. as you can come. <laughs> and I, I You're good lo- at it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I believe that this is God's story mm-hmm. through us. Mm-hmm. And um, I would just tell his story. I would just say things. I would just tell people. I have a group of friends at, at a ministry that, that I worked at. And I would constantly be coming in and saying, well, Graham did this. Y'all yeah. need to pray about this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. <laughs> and I had friends that would even look at me and say, I don't even know how you're breathing today, mm. you know. And every time I'd say, because he's my breath, wow. you know. And yeah. I don't do it right yeah. a lot of times, mm-hmm. um, but God always does it right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. all I have to do is look to him, look to him, look to him, That's you right. know. And um, every time I would tell a story, someone would say, I really needed to hear that today. Mm-hmm. Or I need you to talk to my friend. Mm-hmm. And I began to realize wow, I am so not alone. Yeah. It may not be the exact same situations, mm-hmm. but but we're all in the same boat. We're yeah. all on a journey of faith. Mm-hmm. And um, and then when God actually did the miracle and Graham mm-hmm. and Graham responded, mm-hmm. I was like, I do have to, and I didn't want to write the book because as you know, mm-hmm. there's some things in that book that's not very flattering of me as a parent. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I knew that it wasn't about me. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. even about Graham. Mm-hmm. It's not even about the miracle. Yeah. yeah. It's about the miracle maker. That's right. That's right. It's right. about God. Mm-hmm. And so when he um, began to prompt me that um, that he wanted me to tell mm-hmm. his story, mm-hmm. um, it, it was scary. Yeah. But it was also a, a big honor. Yeah. Because I think he tells us all to tell our stories. That's right. Absolutely. That they're mm-hmm. his stories and not all of us say yes. Mm-hmm. And um, so I just want to say yes. Yeah. And I just want to get yeah. it out there yeah. that there's hope. You're not alone. That's right. And there's hope. And there his is. name is Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's painful. Beautiful. Yeah. We're thankful that you told Absolutely. Your story. Thank you for yeah. having me. Definitely. Inspiring. Nothing is wasted. A true story mm. of finding peace in chaos. I'm telling you guys. Yeah. We all need to get this book. I mean, beautiful mm-hmm. story. Uh, yeah. Just, just how good yeah. our God is, mm-hmm. man. So like he loves us and he hears yeah. our prayers. Yes. And Jesus is always the answer, no matter what diagnosis mm-hmm. we have, whether right. it's anxiety disorder, yeah. anything. Right. Jesus is the answer. That's right. Always. Always. That's my message. Yeah. Always and forever. And you yeah. can watch the story that we were referencing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Moving Works, as we mentioned before, did an incredible job. Mm-hmm. And you can watch it right now. We're going to show you. So don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Turn up your volume. Put your headphones on and watch <laughs> this video. It right. will move in tears. I'm glad. I know. Yes. I Get know. Some tissues. Yes. Yeah. I was definitely tearing up watching this <laughs> Me video. Too. Get Me your too. tissues. Thank you so much, Lori. Thank God you. Bless. Thank you all. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Thank yes. you. You can see her on the 700 Club. <laughs> Nobody wants to admit that they don't like their child. I mean, it's your kid. You love them. And I did love Graham, but he was, um, he was hard. He was very, very hard. We met at church doing uh, some ministry together. We were a little bit older when we got married, so we talked about having children quickly. They were going to become Christians uh, at a very early age because we were going to have them in church and pray with them all the time. And I think 10 months after we were married, we had Graham. We took him home. He was healthy. He looked just like me. We didn't really have a comparison, so we didn't know exactly at the moment um, that, that things were different. It wasn't that he was bad. He was just very, very, very active. He was moving around all the time, disrupting class, getting in trouble. I noticed, too, that he would not really play with the other kids. He didn't have friends. They would make fun of him. Just, uh, it was like he was haunted. We took him to the doctor, and uh, he was diagnosed with ADHD. That may be true, but there's something social that we're missing. He wasn't disciplined. He wouldn't. uh, Listen. Okay, Graham needs a time out or something. Here was this little person not doing anything that we said. We disciplined out of anger on several occasions. 
Graham, you need to get it and get out. It was scary, you know, sometimes to think, what are we doing, you know? We had a plan, but we felt very much out of control. We're spanking all the time, we're disciplined all the time, we're supposed to be having fun, we're supposed to have great relationships with our kids, and it's not turning out at all like we thought it was supposed to. Okay, let's get this in my finger. At 10 years old, he was diagnosed with Asperger syndrome. But instead of like a, a terrible news, it was kind of a relief. It was like, finally, I knew there was something else. When he was probably about 12, his behavior, it just was so overwhelming. I remember just going in my bedroom and being so exasperated. I just fell down on my bed and I just began sobbing and I cried out to God and I said, God, I'm tired of asking you to help me because I can't do it. You need to do it. It was pretty amazing because I heard him say in my spirit, Graham is gonna get it. And I sat up and I looked around the room and I said, what? <laughs> and God said to me again, Graham is gonna get it. And I said, okay, then I trust you that Graham's gonna get it. And he didn't tell me what to do, he just gave me hope. I'm glad God gave me that at that point because it was pretty much downhill after that. <laughs> Around 13, Graham began using marijuana. He began the ritual of cutting himself to relieve anxiety. He would start fires in our house and we wouldn't know it. And then it was at that point that he and his dad got in a fight. We were fighting each other basically. And, you know, I partly think it's my fault, but he ran out and he got a, a rock and he threw it and he hit me in the head. And I said, call 911. The police said, that's enough. And we know you're gonna let him come back, but we're not. And so they actually put a restraining order on him and he went to jail. I wanna have a friendship with him. As a dad, you know, I'm, I'm the guy that's uh, over the family. And that's what God anticipated it to be. But I still need to be friends and love. Shortly thereafter, he had some kind of emotional breakdown. He broke into a home and he got in trouble with a very strict county in Texas. For two years, they had him bouncing back and forth from the mental hospital to jail and back and forth. He did try to commit suicide several times. He cut himself several times. I can remember one time that he was bleeding out of consciousness because he cut his neck in several places. Every night I would wake up and I found myself just talking to God and telling him all the things I was scared about. They were not trusting prayers. They, they turned into uh, worry sessions. I wanted Graham to have peace and have joy. And then I thought, well, peace and joy is Jesus. That's a person. So I began to just pray, God, please let Graham experience you. That's really what he needs. He doesn't need mama to come and rescue him or daddy to come and um, flip a bill and, and get him out of a jam. Uh, if he's in a jam, you are his rescuer and he has to experience you and I have to let him go to do that. But when he finally did get out, he decided that he was going to go to Colorado. Marijuana was going to be his answer that was going to give him peace and he got a bus ticket. He went to Colorado. Colorado wasn't everything he thought. So he ended up hitchhiking to Portland, Oregon. Hit the bottom there too, didn't have any body that he knew. We're actually on a vacation in Mexico during this time and uh, Graham called us just half crazed. He was crying and screaming and, and mad because he had ran out of all of his medications and he was at a hospital and they wouldn't give him any more medications. I said, Graham, we can wire you some money, but there, there's nothing else we can do. He got upset, he hung up on me. And right before he hung up on me, he said, I'm gonna hurt somebody. 
I couldn't jump on a plane. I couldn't call him. He lost his phone. He called me from the hospital. There was nothing. This feels very bad. It feels like, it feels like the end. And so all we could do was pray. And instead of having my worry sessions and my prayer, um, I just, I cut it short. And, and I just told God, um, he is so yours and he's always been yours. I want so badly to go rescue him, but I know you brought me here. I believe you brought me here for a reason and you took me out of the way and I need to trust that. So please help me just to let it go and to let you do your thing with him. And amazingly, I closed my eyes and I fell asleep. I actually took a nap, I mean like right away. And I don't nap, <laughs> never nap. God just flooded me with peace right in the middle of the hugest storm. We were in Cabo for two weeks. We came home and I brought my mind back to my son. However we can do it, we have to get plane tickets and go to Portland. And it may be that we find him in a morgue. We had just to trust God, period. Come on, get it. So two and a half weeks later, right, I got a call from California. I answered it, and I heard Graham. He called me and he said, Mom, I lost everything. Someone stole my backpack, and I was just on the street, and I couldn't call you. I didn't have any money. I didn't have my ID. I didn't have anything. He said, I knew. I didn't know anybody for thousands of miles, but I knew God. I was in Sacramento. I had just hopped a freight train down with a bunch of people from Portland. And I had this like vision. Some of it might have been a dream, but I saw like hell. And it wasn't just this place where people were eternally tortured. It was this place where people chose to do things their own way and to live without God because they didn't want to be with their creator. So they didn't get to live with him ever. And everyone there wanted a relationship with this creator now. The next day, I was so filled with compassion and love for other people that the people I was hanging out with couldn't stand to be around me. They actually kicked me out of their group because of the transformation that happened overnight that night. Graham had experienced God. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. At this time, I was still using uh, medical marijuana to treat my anxiety, bipolar disorder. I remember very clearly, God showed me what my life would look like if he did heal me and what it would look like if he didn't. And the difference was extreme. And uh, he gave me a choice. He also made that choice very easy. Amazing transformation since then. Graham is off of all his medication. He's off of all drugs. He's walking with the Lord. What we've prayed at his youth has come to pass in his older age. Who died on the cross for you? And that's who God's son is, isn't it? Jesus is the only source of peace that I have found. What I used to trust God for was an outcome, was what I was praying for, that I trusted that, that would happen. And now it's not about the outcome, but it's about trusting God for trusting God. He knew how far to go with Graham. He knew when and how and where Graham was gonna respond. And he did it. And I'm very, very grateful.